Welcome back to Muddy Math, where we take middle school math concepts that are a little muddy and clear them up. My name's Sam, and I'm here to help you create a math journey that you're proud of and that you enjoy. Something you can come back to regularly. Math has a layer of negativity all around this world, and I'm here to help you pull off those layers of negativity and start building up these beautiful layers of enjoyment and delight. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the math practice. Today we're looking at changing quantities at home. Choose two changing quantities in your house. For example, the depth of water filling in a sink over time, or the number of objects on a table. Can you determine which parts of the situation are constant and which parts are changing? Which can be assigned a variable? Create an input-output table for your independent and dependent quantities. Can you create an equation that works in several different scenarios of the same situation? Then test the accuracy of your equation. Here we are at the whiteboard trying to consider, does my sink fill up at a constant rate of speed? Does the water height change at a constant rate of speed? I can use speed as my terminology here instead of rate of change because I'm measuring over time and speed is measured over time. So I'm measuring inches over time. And what you see I've done here is the red line represents the data I took from my sink filling up when there were a bunch of dishes in there. And you see that the height of the water increases faster when there's a bunch of dishes in the sink versus the blue line which shows the trial when I had very little dishes in the sink. So when there's few dishes in the sink, it makes sense that the water fills at a slower rate than when the, di the dishes are in the sink, the water fills at a faster rate. So with linear relationships, we can say that these two look pretty, pretty linear. Now my line is wobbly, which yours might be too, because I'm connecting data points. And when you have data points, from observations, you often want to do a scatter plot. So stay tuned, I'm going to use a graphing utility, graphing software to show you what that would look like more precisely, and then we can look at a line of best fit. But for this, just to get an idea, I would say that my sink fills at a constant rate of speed, constant rate of change. And with data, you can take the last point and interpolate, so which means from zero zero to the maximum height of my sink when I had dishes in it it took about six minutes and when I did not have dishes in it it took about six minutes and 45 seconds or six minutes and three quarters of a minute to determine the approximate slope of this line I can say that the average speed is just dividing that maximum height by the time it took to reach it so for when I had dishes in my sink it looks like seven six as a decimal is 1.17, so this is telling me that the height of the water in my kitchen sink, Y, equals about 1.17 times the number of minutes. So this is saying that each minute the water level rises about 1.2 inches, let's say. Now, when I don't have dishes in my sink or I have few dishes in my sink, it's increasing the height at a slower speed. So seven divided by six and three quarters is about 1.04. We could even be numeric, more numerically lazy, as Neil deGrasse Tassin says, and we could say that about every minute the water level rises about an inch. So this is our observation. Let's take a look at a graphing software to see what they think the line of best fit is. I'm interested to see if they, I say they, but if the software determines that the lines start at the origin, and if they do start at the origin or close to it, we could say that this is a proportional relationship. From our sketches here, I would say these are proportional because I know that at zero minutes there is no water in my sink, so I connected them to the origin, but this might not be the best fit line, and these aren't even straight, so these are just sketches to help us think, but let's go Take a look at the graphing utility. The line of best fit is the line that cuts through all the data points in a way where it minimizes the distance of all the points to the line. So my line of best fit was pretty close to the one that the calculator created, except it has a 
a shallower slope than mine. My slope was greater than one. This slope is less than one. And it shifted it up. It doesn't say that it starts at zero, zero. It says it starts a Y intercept of one half. Meaning that at zero minutes, the sink had already filled a half an inch. What does that look like on the graphing device? So we can go to um, Y equals and then type in one X plus 0.5 and then graph it. And you can see that that line fits the data pretty well. Signing off. Until next time.